So who's ready to reinstall PFSense Plus software on this big, fat, juicy NetGate 6100? Today, we're gonna take care of that, and we're also gonna use NetGate's new installer, which actually connects to the internet and downloads the necessary image for your firewall. Let's get into it. Welcome to Reasonable IT. Step one, you need to download the NetGate installer, which we're going to flash to our USB stick and put it in our firewall to boot from it and reinstall PFSense Plus software. Make sure you choose the correct installation image. In our case, we're doing a 6100, so we're gonna do an AMD 64 memstick USB. You're gonna select add to cart. Yes, you will need a NetGate account in order to download this. It is a free download and it is free to set up a NetGate account. But once you do, you hit enter cart and it's gonna ask you to sign in once you click checkout. Once you have your file downloaded, you're going to start up Belina Etcher, which is another free download. If you don't have it, go get it. We're gonna use this utility to flash the file to our USB stick. And all you do is you select flash from file, select your downloaded file, select your target, that should be your USB stick, and then click flash. And presto, you have your USB stick ready to go. And moving on to layer one of the OSI model. If you guys know your basic networking, you'll know I'm referring to the physical layer. So let's get physical, physical. I wanna get physical. I just wanna cover some of these connections. So here is going to be our uplink connection. Yes, this does require an internet connection in order for this to work. I simply plugged my network cable into WAN 1, and then I plug the other end into my switch, which has an uplink to my ISP. Here is the console cable, because I'm gonna be consoling in with my computer, right, to run the update. Here is your basic power cable, and then lastly, on the side of this guy, I have my USB flash drive plugged into either one of those ports should suffice. I am using a USB extension for the console cable because it is rather short and it won't reach my computer. Almost forgot to mention, if it's the first time you're constantly into a 6100, you probably will not have the correct driver to do so. You download and install the driver from this NetGate website. They have a link right here available for download. Go ahead and click on that. You're going to head over to downloads and this CP210X Windows drivers if you're on a Windows computer. As you can see here, I've downloaded the driver already. Let's go to extract all, extract, rate. Now I'm gonna copy this path, minimize those. I'm gonna come over here, update driver. I'll search in this location. Paste that location and do next. Aha, it found the drivers in that directory. And there we go. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and fire up PuTTY and get connected to the console of our NetGate 6100. Here we are in PuTTY. You will need to know your COM port that your NetGate 6100 is connected to. If you don't, do Windows flag and the letter R on your keyboard to bring up the run menu. And you're gonna type in devmgmt.msc, okay. This will bring up your device manager, go down to ports. My CP210 is on COM4. So let's go back to our PuTTY client, serial, change that one to a four. The speed is going to be 115.200. And we're gonna go ahead and open that console session. There's nothing going on right now because I haven't powered on the firewall. Hang on just a moment. As long as you formatted your USB stick properly, it's going to boot from it automatically. We do not need to interrupt the boot process and type in run USB recovery in the Marvel menu. Nothing like that as we had to do with SG1100. So it is a little bit different reinstall on the 6100. Give it just a minute to do its thing. And it's gonna ask us a terminal type in just a moment. If you're used to using PuTTY, X term usually works fine. Here we are in the install menu, let's accept that. We're gonna install PFSense. Proceed with installation, recovered config, blah, 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 no. Continue, proceed with installation. This is where we need to choose the correct WAN port that has an uplink to our internet ISP. So let's go to WAN, verifying internet connection. And as long as you have it connected to your switch, it should be able to, to detect the internet. And it did. If it does not detect it, you will get an error message. So please select the file system type and the partition scheme. Proceed with installation. If you select continue, it will use the default, which is ZFS. Continue. Select the ZFS configuration option. 
blah 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 we're not doing any ra raid on this so i'll just choose the first option enter to continue select the disk for the software installation there should only be one disk and that is my netgate 6100 let's do okay on that last chance are you sure you want to destroy the current contents of the following disk let's do yes on that committing changes please wait now it's also going to have to download the pfsense plus version from netgate repository which is over the internet so this is going to take a little bit longer than it would if you had the image already flashed to your usb stick like we've done in the past with the sg1100s but as you can see here it gives you a couple different options we want the latest version the latest stable version which is 24.03 so i'm just going to hit enter for okay on that and it's going to install I'm not gonna bore you guys with this process, so I will go back to you once this has completed. It has completed. That was actually a lot faster than I expected, but then again, I am on a half gig connection up and down. If you're on a slower connection, keep that in mind, or maybe if you're just trying to install this offline, also keep that in mind, this installer will not work for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Installation of PFSense complete. Would you like to reboot into the install system now? And actually what you're going to probably want to do here is not reboot it. Maybe go into the shell menu and issue a shutdown command because we need to remove that USB stick from the firewall. Otherwise, it's probably going to continue to try and pixie boot from it. And as you can see... We are on the latest release, ladies and gentlemen, 24.03. One final thing I want to do, you guys, is I want to run a ZFS command to check if it's actually, the file system is indeed ZFS. All right, let's try mount. La 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 la. What is this that keeps popping up when I hide? No, that's annoying. Go away. Mm, yeah, this is definitely looking ZFS, guys. Well, that'll do it.